Hello everyone, welcome to another processing video. So this time I'm talking about a new trick I learned where you just directly change the color of the pixels on the screen as opposed to changing uh, the indiv or I mean uh, instead of just drawing the points. And this is especially useful when you're using uh, Perlin noise to create things like landscapes or you're trying to draw clouds maybe or um, drawing terrain just directly editing the pixels is going to be a lot more beneficial or it's going to be a lot faster in terms of the uh, runtime so the amount of time it takes for the screen to update is going to be a lot faster than if you were to just draw each individual point because the point function is actually a derivative of other um, code so when you just directly draw the points as uh, by, by changing the colors of the pixels it helps the program run faster All right. so I decided to use this knowledge to draw a chessboard and let me just demonstrate the program uh, it doesn't really do much it's just it draws a chessboard and uh, the brown color is black while the kind of uh, lighter color is white and I do like this color scheme I think it's a lot better than other ones because it's easy on the eyes and it's not as uh, there's not as much of a contrast so do note that the center bottom left square is white and the center bottom right square is brown. And basically if you think about it, if you're playing on the white side, your queen will be on the left because it's going to be on the uh, the D file. Also, the queens of both sides are going to be on their respective colors. And this is true for both sides. Uh, because if you were playing as black, so you, you mentioned that you flip the board 180 degrees, it doesn't actually make a change in the uh, the color scheme because your queen is now on the right side instead of the left side. Uh, so yeah. Now let's think about how I accomplish this and what method I use to actually pick the colors. So basically you can do a nested for loop from 0 to less than 8 and you can do that for both x and y and basically if the sum of x and y is not divisible by 2 then that means you can pick some color so either white or black you kind of have to think about it in order to decide which one you want to do uh, and then in the other case in which it is divisible by 2, the sum of x and y, uh, you can basically just set it to the other color. And then for each of those x and y values, you can then pick a, uh, pick a pixel to change color. So the way you use pixels, and uh, pixels is basically when you turn the canvas into just the pixels and then you can edit the array of pixel colors after that you can update the pixels and then the change will occur and pixels is a one-dimensional array so it contains all the colors and for the canvas um, it will be y multiplied by the width of the canvas plus the x value being the index within the pixels array. So in normal Cartesian you would do a point at x comma y. However in this pixels uh, 1D array you will have to uh, do width plus the y value plus the x value. And what I do here is um, 
I basically ran the whole thing without the uh, the other for loop that I added to scale it up, and basically I got this tiny eight by eight um, square where the colors seemed to alternate. So I knew it was a kind of checkerboard pattern. And after that, I scaled it up. So how am I supposed to scale it up? That is the main question we have to answer. Um, and basically what you can do is you can have a scale variable. And I picked uh, 120. You can also pick any other value because you can adapt your code according to the value you pick. And so, um, of course, board is a class, and you can create a board object out of that class. But it doesn't actually have that many variables. It's just the colors that are loaded. And then it picks the colors for each square. So when we're using this nested for loop method of just going from 0 to 8 for both x and y, uh, we were able to draw the chessboard pattern. But then um an 8x8 eight eight in terms of pixels that square is going to be tiny so if you want your your player to actually be able to see the squares then you're going to have to scale up the size and how you do that is uh, the method I did was I did another pair of nested for loops or just another uh, yeah that that is a nested for loop All right. so you go from x times scale to x times scale plus scale and then you also do that for y and after that you can then do the pixels for this i and j variable where they replace x and y and what that does is basically it goes through um, kind of the big square on the screen not like the tiny square so you're kind of scaling everything up by a scale of whatever you pick. In this case, it's uh, 120. You can also do like 100. 100 is easier to explain. So when you do 100, you're going to draw each 100 by 100 square that is of um, the same color individually. And then you're going to draw the next square and the next square. And that's basically the whole process. Um, what else? So. Um, it might be kind of hard to write the uh, the kind of algorithm you want for pixels because you might not be sure about the math. However, do note that when you pick i and j, you are basically just um, doing the same thing as x and y, except uh, every value is now in a range. So for every value in the range, you can set the pixels of uh, width times j plus i, just like when we did uh, width times y plus x. All right. Uh, of course, it's kind of like what was it? It's kind of like when you forgot what it's called, but something with transformations. You can like do an unlock and then you can lock it. Yeah, I'm very confused about what that was. Like you can do a rotation and then snap it back. But anyway, you have to load the pixels first. You have to load the canvas into a pixels array and then you have to update the pixels at the end. And that way it goes back into being a regular canvas. Let's see. Yeah, so in draw, all we have is board.display. And if you were um, trying to program a chess game, then what you would have to do is, you know, every frame you have to draw your board along with all the pieces. So if you had the pieces.display, then you can definitely just add it right after this. So yeah, that's how you use uh, pixels. Uh, I'm not sure about the official terminology of uh, this method. So, 
I guess I'll just stay in the dark about that. Well, I'll try to find out. You can call it like pixels array, how to use the pixels array, or how to convert the canvas into pixels. I'm not really sure, but I definitely get the concept. So, um, yeah, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.